For those who don't know, I grew up in a, let me tell you a little bit of my, about my life story. First of all, say we're me and we're going to talk about diversity and inclusion, um, um, dealing with a diverse world. And the reason why that's important to me is because, one, I was you. So a lot of times, I, I got a special heart in the game because a lot of times when I see these students, I see me. And because I grew up in East Hartford, we went through some changes in East Hartford, and then we got to where we are now. And um, I think that uh, if enough of us do the things we are, do, do the things we do and represent the way that we are, we can influence and make positive change. So, I grew up in East Hartford. This is back in the day, right? Back in the 80s. So I grew up in East Hartford. Back then, East Hartford, if I was to show you a data chart, East Hartford was a primarily white town. So if you were to look at my class picture, you would see, you would know who I was. Because the rest of the faces were white. Um, and so my family, we, they, we moved here from Hartford, and my family, we, we had to get used to the neighborhood. We had to get used to a new style of communication. I had to talk to my classmates, and my classmates didn't necessarily know me, but they knew stereotypes of who I was. And so from a very young age, I knew differences, in the differences between me and other students, okay? So whether that was, um, I remember when I was five years old, we got a, a handwritten letter in the mail asking um, my family to move out of the neighborhood. Marford or East Hartford? This is East Hartford. Oh. This is back in the East Hartford. Now remember what I said. East Hartford went from a town that was 13% um, diverse, and then now we're what? 87 or 89. Not diverse, I shouldn't say, but... Um, it was primarily white, it was 13% a minority, and now the majority, 87%, well, is that minority, you know, it's black, Latino, yeah. um, whatever the state uh, categorizes as it now. So it was very difficult. Diversity, to me, at a young age, was very confusing. <laughs> it was hard for me because I had these thoughts and I had these emotions about the world that was going on around me, but I had no outlet. I didn't know what to do with it. It was very frustrating. Then right around um, the late 80s, early 90s, Burnside Avenue, they built um, some low-income housing over there, right? And then that's when the integration began. So now it wasn't just me in my class. If you look at my middle school picture, it looks like it looks like this. It looks like this room, right? And I saw the kids changed a lot, but the staff didn't. And because of that, there was a lot of miscommunications. Um, some kids didn't feel like they had the relationships that they needed to. There wasn't necessarily a sense of belonging. I remember on Burnside Avenue. There was a lot of gang activity because when you don't have a sense of belonging, you kind of attach onto something else. So at the time, it was 20 Love, it was um, uh, Los Salidos, and it was all that. It was all that. Burnside? Burnside. Salas was over here? Yes. Yes. It was hot. And um, I just remember looking around, and it was just so much emotion and commotion going on. And it was small things. You know, I think everybody's intent was good. But everybody kept wanting somebody else to act like them. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants somebody, so the, so the teachers with people who weren't from the area where they're from, and it wasn't all teachers, but they want the students to behave like how they think they should behave. Sitting still, straight, quiet when I say quiet. Right? And students, we were like, you have to show me some respect. And so the teachers that showed it really got it back. And then the other teachers that didn't, it was a very hard, 
hard and difficult time. So I'm always analyzing. You know what I mean? I like at first when I didn't have the words, I internalized it. Later on, when I got to high school, I decided to try to put it to work. So I joined our diversity team at the high school. Uh, we ran around, we talked to kids, um, we talked to teachers and the staffs. Um, we did a Channel 3 camp and we went and talked to other kids from other towns. And um, I felt like it was a really powerful time. But the message just wasn't shared enough. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to become a teacher. Then I'll share the message. And so a lot of you, you remember me. I remember back in the day, I used to be Hip Hop Higgins. I did anything I possibly could to convey a message. I mean, I was dancing for you. I was rapping for hey, you. We were playing. No Wasn't you like the O'Brien mascot? With the I would dress up as the O'Brien yeah, Lion that. mascot. Anything, because I knew that those relationships were important. But there's one thing that I never that I never got to, and I always regret it, and I, I feel like it was a system issue. I never had the opportunity to be totally inclusive. And I think that now in my teaching career, it's really about the opportunity to take in what you have to say. And for me to make those informal and formal decisions to make that change, right? So if I look and I say, and I talk to the, the district of East Hartford is pushing this thing forward saying that we need relationships, relationships are important for all children, right? You can't just say it. There has to be changes. You can't keep the wheel going the same. So what do we do? We have discussions like these. Or me and Miss Riley, we create a mentor program where I got people who look like you with practices like you come in and share with our kids, possibly in a way that I can. But my question to you is what changes can you make? Right? You're the next generation taking control. How can you take what you do and make it so it's engaging? Right? So it's easy to be critical about other people. But the most difficult part is to make change that works. And I don't have all the answers. And that's why I'm here with you. Got it? So we're going to do an activity called a fishbowl. And y'all going to take this over. I'm going to take four people. You're going to sit down on the inside of the fishbowl. We're going to have a discussion about education, school, experience. Everybody else, you can stay on the outside, but if you have something to say and you want to come in, you just tap somebody out. You got it? Like Morgan and stuff like that. You don't learn that stuff in math, but that's stuff that you need to like. You learn like, 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 like I'm going to call it with that other stuff. Like, I don't I mean, play that's that. Like, we're going to use that later on. So you think more practical skills would yeah. close cultural gaps yeah. in education. Go ahead. I think I'm like, you see, like, someone that's different from your race, the only a time, no matter what you call them, like, try to work with them and stuff. Try that's, to work with them? Like, someone you, you don't usually hang out with, do that in class and school or something. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say do that, what do you mean? What are some of the ways that you would like to be connected with in order for, for something like that to work? Like, group, like, group, like, a group in class or you just ask them a question if you need help, like that. Groups in class, ask them a question if you need help. So do you mean like grouping up the students like we're grouping up right now? Something like the advisor? Yeah, a little more smaller, but yeah. Something like that. Okay. Yes? I think like when we learn the history about slavery and um, segregation and things, we only learn about the struggles of the black people when we don't learn about if there was white people and they were like against it, what happened to them, how they feel about it. Mm. I feel like it makes the white kids uncomfortable mm -hmm. and they don't want to speak on the topic. So there's a lot of different facets to, to the struggle. A lot of time when we hear that story, you're saying we just hear that struggling slave story. And we don't hear about the Latinas or the Asians <coughs> in that time period at all. At all, right? 
And that's part of our diversity and that's part of our world. And that would make it a more comfortable place if we are inclusive of that story. What else? Like the same thing he said, but like a class for it, like stuff that we need outside of school, when we get older and stuff, we don't be learning about that. So we don't learn. So our curriculum should be more reflective. So if you were if you were to have a study to make a diversity curriculum, what types of things should we be noticing? What types oh. of things about maybe our pop culture or whatever? Go ahead. Like you're in the class, and then you gotta find uh, someone from the opposite of your um, your race or son, and you guys gotta do history and research on each other's um, culture. Yeah. And at the end, you guys do an exam or an essay on each other's um, each other's culture. That'd so yeah, that would be good. So so maybe in part of your class, you're studying each other's background. Um, was as well run as it possibly be, as well efficient as it was run. Yes? I think they should talk about the fact that there's certain jobs that only some races get. Like it's like it's more common to see someone working in certain places with, as in suppose as another race, so mm -hmm. it would be easier yeah. to hire them. But if we had a class that would like teach us how to get in that situation, like in that position to set it forward and hire the Mm -hmm. Now sometimes there's still there's still like racism around today. I mean, so so like there's still like there's still black versus white that I, that I be seeing like me me personally. So sometimes like to make to make everybody unite, sometimes it's like you gotta like say you you got like a group of white kids, yeah. like, strictly have them like study about what happened to the blacks and the group of blacks because there's still racism around to study like strictly for whites and then like. So they can actually learn about what really happened and not just have some hate. So I think you have a point in that, right? So if we have, we call it, we, we call it deficit thinking, right? If we have deficit thinking where, where there's an underlying issue to the discussion and we never talk about it, we never talk about that race matters in some situations, yeah. then that issue is always going to be there, sitting there on the table. So it's to be able to talk about that. And I like the way that y'all are doing it because it's in considerate ways, right? It's not just throwing it into somebody's face saying, hey, this, hey, that. It's more about the content, the knowledge. This is what we've gone through. Let me share it with you. Now I really want to know what you've gone through. Now let's take a test on each other and see if we really have retained what each other's gone through. And then once you're on that, that same ground, you can build from there, right? You have anything to say? I mean, why should follow along with what he said about the math? Like, they be teaching, teaching, teaching us this algebra, we're not going to use this later, you feel me? Mm -hmm. I know we're not going to use it. All that x plus this, you feel me? That's going to be frustrated anymore. So, the kind, so some of the work gets you frustrated because you think that in your future, to your future culture, that it's not going to matter. Right? But, somebody like you, right? You may go to college. Or somebody else in that class may go to college, right? So some of that curriculum might matter. Maybe in it we could do some tweaking to make it more relative. Let me have you come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the name. Anybody can stand up and tap somebody out if they have something to say. I didn't know that. You can, anytime you have something to say, you can come in and tap somebody out. Uh, I feel like the work should be harder. Like not harder, but I feel like Charming. it's too easy to find the information. I feel like you got to learn more about getting notes and stuff. Like, Because like in college, you really need to know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they should bring back learning cursive and stuff. Yeah, that's a big ass leap, yo. That that's a big <laughs> leap from high school to college. They they should at least like yeah, from yeah. sophomores from sophomores on, they should they should, <laughs> they should change it up a bit. So you're you're talking about so when we're talking about learning, right? You're saying that we should make you want the curriculum to be more difficult or more applied to things that you're going to use. Like all right, for history, 
Like, you know how like, you go to college and say you do a business, mm -hmm. and you really got like an essay or something, or the information you have to find, oh, you, you really have to like, study. Business. I feel like you have to get that in school, because like, some of this stuff I learn here, I don't got to study. I, I just like got to read it real quick, and I'm able to do it. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's too easy sometimes. But then you also have some challenges and things like this here, right? And so something like diversity and inclusion with this here, just tap, come in and tap somebody on the shoulder. Oh, uh, yep. I want to get out. <laughs> Come on, I'll get you back. Something like diversity and inclusion, something like this, this is about creativity, this is about listening, this is about molding. So when you guys are talking about we want real life situations, here it is right here. This is real life. <laughs> right? And so you're using your full mind. And so you all have, here's another question. Well, first I'm going to let you say what you want to say. Yeah. And then I'm going to say here again. And you too. Careful to see me. Okay, go ahead. Okay. On you. Like what he was saying, like I, I feel like some kids don't need to have the harder work, but I get what he's saying. Like there's some things in class where like right now math we're going over like everything, but feel me, I did that in eighth grade. Like I, I basically already passed that class. I feel like if I just did that with did you mm -hmm. for a okay. week, I'll be set to do my own work because then I'm just done with everything mm -hmm. and I'm just sitting there. Mm -hmm. So I feel like school should be more like considered that everyone is different and works at a different pace. So mm -hmm. I need different work than the person sitting next to me. Oh. So, so yeah, part about the educational system might be it might it may be making sure that it's catering to your needs as well as somebody else's needs next to you. Yeah. Absolutely. And you had something you were gonna to say too. I don't wanna to jump on it. It slipped out your head. Okay, stay right there, I'm gonna have something for you. I don't mean, I thought you were gonna say something else. I just forgot what I said thank you. Alright, go ahead. I need somebody else who hasn't been in. Come on. I did. No, come on back. He's taking. Come on back. You didn't say anything. Uh, new question for you. <laughs> all right, so I'm making all of you principals now. Okay? Principals of a school. Based on culture, diversity, and trying to include everybody, tell me right now what are some of the changes you'd make to the informal practices and the formal practices. Yes? I would make more groups, like, now we have advisory, and it's like, I would be more considerate of putting people, I think, in the advisory that need to connect with each other more than people that are already connecting with each other. Mm -hmm. I would rather put people that, mm -hmm. like, are really different, but at the same time, they need to see that they're almost the same. Like, your, your color, your, you might be completely different, and they were going to the same school, and we're trying to, we have the same goals, you know what I'm saying? So we should all try to be together. So more things such as advisory, but bringing pe different type of people, I'm making sure I understand this. Yeah, like change it, because now, like, I know everybody in here, and, like, y'all cool people, but what about the people I don't know? Oh, so I had, like, a business class, or life lesson class. All right. Everybody go back to your seat. diversity inclusion is one it goes below the surface level right so normally when we see each other we say hello hi how are you doing but diversity inclusion getting to know somebody and regulating rules some of those things that I just heard as an educator if I heard it for the first time I might get a little defensive because I think that I'm trying to do what's best for you you know so really change, hold on, wait one second for I'm, me now. I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. Really change is about your ability <laughs> to communicate what you need, what right? You want. What you want without being overly offensive. It may be disruptive, but not overly offensive. You have to find a way to do it within the system and let them know that there might be system changes. Thanks. And that's the difficult part about it. Because it goes below, and it's very hard to control the emotion that's around it. Yeah, but sometimes teachers be, they be too, like they don't know what's going on in yeah, our yeah, life. Yeah. They, they, they don't know what we going through at the time, what we doing out of school, what we got to do, our responsibilities that we have. And sometimes they attack us without knowing, and then when we come off, they, they like they, they be like, oh, you disrespecting me to the max. Like, nah, you... You gotta understand, you can't come out. I understand you're a teacher, but you can't come out that. Sometimes the, the way teachers come out, it like it feels like we being attacked. So then when we come out, 
It's like, oh, you got to get out. It's not so, like that. So, so I mean, sometimes they, they got to think about the way they approach the students. Yeah. Because then, I understand, some students approach them beforehand, and that, that's reasonable if you come out. But, like, if a teacher's approaching you, and you feeling like you attacked, that's like, they don't know what we going through. Just like we don't know what they going through, too, but... Yeah. But feel me, like I like that. I like that. That's that mutual thing. And so when I said when when I went back to the middle school in my experience, that's how it was. It, like the some sometimes with some people, you felt like the respect was missing. But what I really took into consideration with that is what can I do? So yes, this person doesn't understand my situation. Now what am I doing to let them understand the situation? Because the first thing is awareness. No matter what we, no matter what we think, and what we think that they should know, anyone should know about us. They haven't lived your life. Exactly. Yeah. So you got to paint the best picture you can, because nobody's ever going to live your life, never. Yeah. So you have to say, for me, I paint the best picture. I came in here and I tried to paint the best picture I can of my experience. Mm -hmm. Say, listen, I've been here. I've experienced some deficit thinking, and now I'm on the point where I want to turn around and change it. You like, even though you ain't getting nothing while you was going up, you're trying to get back. I'm trying to get back, but I don't take it personal. I don't think that I understand that sometimes it's a system. I also understand that sometimes people just aren't aware. So me being the only one at one point, the only brother in the class, the, the teacher might have been unaware of my, what my needs were. When I was in middle school. Understand that teachers were trying to working really hard. They just weren't working in the way that was the best for me all the time. Now, in that, I had teachers who were outstanding, who understood, who gave me what I wanted. And these were these were um, white female teachers too. You know, the furthest distance from necessarily who I am, mm -hmm. and they got me. But then there was other people who I was extremely di um, upset with about it because you know. Either the way the tone of voice was, or what they were saying to me, I, yeah, I, I, think, I, I think like that's there, one was, of the, there was respect with that. That's one of the biggest. Well, in my in my opinion, that's one of the biggest issues is like the way teachers coming out and shit like it, it, just like the way students coming out. But it's like it's stuff that happens out of school they, they don't know about, and we're not gonna talk about it. But for me, the, we going through. It. But what I'm saying is that, and I still got your question, is that somehow we got to talk about some of it. Yeah. Because I can't take care of you if I have no idea what you need. Yeah. Yes. Um, I agree. I understand what you're saying, but like, I feel like that's kind of an excuse. Because like, a kid, like, Dave was talking to me. He was saying like, "Oh, you gotta be, you gotta be away from the kids." Cause, so, I mean, he cussing at me, but I don't know what's going on in the house. But still, even though stuff could be going on with you, there's kids who go through it every day and still do it at school. It's mm -hmm. about like your mindset. Like, I feel like in school you need to be really with the kids. Like, you gotta really let them know that what's gonna happen if they keep cussing at teachers and doing dumb shit. Because then you ain't gonna you gotta do anything in life. Life's a hard place. And if you can't do it, then you ain't gonna get it. If you need something, you gotta go get it. No one's gonna give it to you. I got that. But see, here's what we got. And so the, sometimes those are the differences in opinion. We have your reality.